slurped it up, my Gs. I hope you're all doing wonderful. Um, today I'm going to give you a really cool couple of tips for phase plant sound design. And I think it's going to, yeah, open some eyes, hopefully. And um, this is also quite eye-opening. This is a photo I took when I was travelling, uh, actually 11 years ago now. I was travelling in the Netherlands. And I went to this really, really random small little village called Oldenzaal. And um, I just had a subscriber recently from Oldenzaal grab my new face plant preset pack. So I thought, wow, I've not uh, remembered that place for ages. And um, yeah, here's a little photo I took. I actually was wild camping and it just happened to be on the same day that there was like an air show. And there was actually hundreds of hot air balloons. You can see one in the middle here that's uh, sort of upside down. I'd never seen that before. Uh, but it was a really cool one of those just moments where you just happen to be in the right place at the right time. But anyway, the Netherlands is great for camping. Shout out all the Netherlands squad in the house. It's crazy to see um, who I end up, um, yeah, meeting via YouTube, like random people. It's, it's awesome. It never ceases to amaze me. Anyway. Um, yeah, thanks to all you guys for grabbing the, uh, the recent preset pack and everything. And I wanted to share like a, my little magic formula on how I made a lot of the sounds on the, the phase plant preset pack, the magic box. Because someone actually commented also recently saying, oh, can you recreate these in Serum? And um, as polite as I can uh, say no, the answer is no. <laughs> because Serum doesn't have granular synthesis. And to create all of these sounds or, or a, lot, a lot of the sounds in my pack... I used granular synthesis to get the texture. It would not have been possible without it. But here is my special formula for phase plant that I've really been enjoying recently in uh, on a, a number of patches. And you can definitely hear it quite well on the Susudio, Susu Studio bass. And you can hear it quite well on the book bender. And so in a nutshell, my formula that I really, really enjoy when I'm doing sound design in phase plant is to basically this is to kind of uh, simplify it it's to get a great sample for granular synthesis then it's to run this into a sine wave with some frequency modulation and then it's to add another sine wave at a different pitch to create a detuning motion and it's to try and form a kind of counter rhythm between the granular synthesis which is creating a rhythm and the detuning of the sine waves which are also creating a rhythm and then it's to slam that through the shaper, which is the distortion uh, tool in Phase Plant, and then do a bunch of other enhancements. But the, that's the that's the basically the um, the formula. Um, yeah, the formula for actually, uh, you know, I need to just reopen my uh, Magic Box folder here because I've just lost it. Uh, I think I was on the S -S -S Studio base, right? <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> There are some macros here, which change the tonality. But all right, let's 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 dive into the actual sound design because you can see the, there's not like so many plugins that it's like impossible to fathom what's going on in here, okay? Uh, but as I said, um, I basically, I take one granular sound and in this case, it was the piano octaves. Okay, I've got to turn the gain back up here. We can turn off our, like some of our effects over here. And um, just so we know exactly what we're doing. So the, the granular generator is doing its thing already. And I, I just focus on this box here, which is the, the um, yeah, the, 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 the amount of grains, I believe. Yeah, the amount of grains. Uh, and I just focus on, on moving that around. You know, to start what I would consider to be a good kind of speed and a good rhythm for the patch. Right, so that's the first, that's the first process. And then what I do is I run that into a sine wave. And so I just set the output here and set set the phase um, of a sine wave. Yeah, set, set the output of the... Oh, I can't talk today. I can't talk! Right. I set the output of the granular generator to go into a sine wave via frequency modulation by modulating the phase. Okay. And swinging that to the left. You can swing it to the left or the right. And... 50 to 70 degrees left or right is usually where you get the best results. So it goes, it gets too overboard if you go too far. Okay. Once I'm happy with the blend, I'll often turn the, it's not always the case I'll turn it off, but I'll often turn off the actual uh, output of the, the granular generator. It's just being used as a carrier now. 
Okay, so, so I've got it running through the sine wave, got that base in it, and now the other part of my technique is to add in another sine wave and uh, to do this, yeah, put this one on a different pitch to the first one so that the detuning motion happens. So you can hear, if I turn this one off, for example, if I turn the granular off, you know, I've got this wobbling sine wave movement because the two sine waves are detuned, they're a different pitch, so they create the natural wobble, you know? So there's two movements going on, isn't there? There's the granular movement that's happening on its own, and then there's the movement between the two sine waves, you know? And so what happens, is, and this is where the magic comes in, is when you then put this through uh, the distortion, that's where you get like new timbres and new things created that you couldn't possibly have ever imagined or done with Serum, for example. Okay, not to knock Serum. I mean, it's great. I'm just, uh, my, uh, the reason why I'm using Phase Plant is not like, oh, because I love the Killer Hearts company or oh, because like, uh, like for any reason other than I just follow my heart with where I think I can get the most, um, yeah, the, the most newest like kind of sounds like i i'd follow my intuition on, on where i think that i can get um i can't use words again today um yeah how i can further explore sound at a deeper level and create new timbres that i couldn't before with the most ease <laughs> that's basically the goal you know and so this formula is working for me very well so uh what I like to do also with the distortion is also do some filtering and often this could be before or afterwards. It's never really like, I'm never too sure which way around. It's always different. But yeah, yeah, filtering that and um, yeah, a little bonus tip, you know, enhancements, you know, you can do whatever you want really, but I've really enjoyed using the comb filter to add stereo width instead of the unison. I find I get a much better result with it. So I slap on a comb filter, I turn on the stereo mode, and then I mix it in, and I find a nice position in, in the frequency amount of the comb filter that adds like the harmonics that I like. And I add that in. And then, then I do like other normal stuff, you know, bits of reverb, extra distortion, a bit of high shelving as well. Because I'm using sine waves, I'm often, I'm, I'm forming always the low end and the mid range mostly. And then so the high end is often sometimes lacking, you know, because it's better to do it that way around than use like saw waves in my opinion. Like obviously it depends what sound you're making, but for like bass sounds, it's better to stick with sine wave like things usually, because then you can really get a full low end and you can worry about the high end later. That's how I like to think about it. But yeah, so, uh, Again, because you've because I've got the the granular, you know, generator in here again, I I can just switch the position around and get a completely different texture again. So that's that's great, really, isn't it? Um, over there, I mean, that sounds wonderful. Then with my drums, for example, very heavy in drum and bass, and um, yeah, basically, long story short, you know, I can change the speed as well, of course. Like the whole textures and timbres can be moved around easily, but it's the formula that I'm trying to tell you about my my favorite winning formula, and that is uh, what I use in a lot of the patches. And so, yeah, it's again, it's just it's like combining two counter rhythms and slamming them through distortion. So it's the counter rhythm of the granular generator doing its thing, combined with the 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 a separate rhythm of the sine waves detuning. And it doesn't. Ha you don't have to fit them so that they they're exact. You can have them so they're like on a different kind of rhythm. But then when you distort it together, that's when you generate like a new, really complex bass sound that sounds epic. Okay. So let's let's move on to um, the other bass as well. Because that, that's basically kind of my formula, you know. Um, and so I just sort of replicate that with other samples and here i've actually used some triangle waves instead of sine waves shoot me i said sine waves before now i'm saying triangle but triangle is is very very similar to sine wave it's just like has a slight little fuzz in the high end but not very much it's mostly still just like very s similar to a sine wave you know but yeah so again for this one like if I, uh I, again let, let's let's just quickly um run over this just to really yeah hammer this point home 
So the granular generator again. It can be any sound really. It's like how you how it corresponds with the sine waves and the distortion is the important part. Like what the actual original sound is, like you're not gonna know how it's gonna end up <laughs> half the time. You know, but this I use I'm using all like the built in face plant samples because there's like more than enough timbres and textures in there for like ultimate like unlimited combinations anyway. So record a hellish cacophony. So that's wonderful. And uh, then again, so we put that through a through a sine wave slash or triangle wave, very similar wave. Don't worry about it. Okay, so that's FM'd in again. The output here, FMing it in. Remember, I've not gone over, got gone overboard with it. I like to swing things to the left a bit. Um, not politically, like I'm not talking. This is not a political channel. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but um, I like to swing the FM to the left a bit because yeah it just i don't know it, it often it sounds a bit better than when i do it to the right i don't know why i don't know why but sometimes it just well 80 percent of the time it sounds better when i swing it to the left <laughs> maybe that's just in my head anyway we've got that motion going on with the triangle wave in there and now again i'll take the gain off on on the granular generator and next um, again, we'll add in, we're adding in the next um, triangle wave. And here you can hear I've actually really um, almost matched the timing, but I don't have to. I can do it like a, d a different timing. So here you've got like the fast granular generator and then you've got like a slower triangle detuned movement, which also would, would absolutely work fine, you know? And um, yeah, we'll slap on all of our effects. This time I've done a, the filter before the distortion. But here you've got this, here you can create these awesome rhythms where the, tri the triangle detuning is like a slower thing and then the granular thing is like a faster thing, you know? So you can get these cool like offbeat rhythms like inside your bass. And so that's epic. Uh, but for this patch, I specifically tried to match them. So like, it's kind of like up to you if you want that like cohesion between the two rhythms or you want them separate and both ways can work excellent. Uh, it's always just paying attention to the timbre that you're creating as well through the movement. That's, that's the exciting part, you know? So anyway, we'll slap on the extra, uh, yeah, the extra effects. So again, like I'm using the comb filter like to mix in some stereo signal, which is excellent. The nonlinear filter again, I've just used it on a flat line, which basically allows you to use the color of the filter and the like kind of shape without like, you know, doing a massive high pass or low pass. So I'm just able to color the sound nicely. And then, yeah, with the third lane again, this one's just like a bit of reverb and a bit of a high end boost. But yeah, and then again, we can control the whole speed and, and tonality of the patch uh, with our macros again. But, but basically you guys know, I'm trying to just hammer this point home of how, uh, quite simple it really is to create like unlimited amount of bass sounds using this kind of formula that I've sort of stumbled across and really enjoyed which is again just finding a great granular sound with a nice yeah rhythm that's already built into it you know by changing the the amount of grains running that through a, a sine wave or a triangle at a low um, octave to get that bass power and to get that movement built in to the bass already. Then setting up another sine wave to detune from it all to create a counter rhythm. And then slamming all of that through different types of shaper distortion and different combinations of like notch filtering and things like that to create then, yeah, the, the final result essentially, you know? So that's just two of the bases in the preset pack that use that technique, but I probably use the similar kind of technique on like at least 15 or 20 of them maybe yeah obviously it's like not the only formula that i used for sound design but that is a formula that i stumbled across recently that is just epic because yeah something magical that just happens when you like have these two counter rhythms going on and you've got this kind of organic texture and then you slap it through the distortion like it just it just generates like such cool sounds always you know and you can always just cycle through your granular presets until you find like a better sound that fits with with the bass that you're trying to make and so that's my little tip for you guys today hope you enjoyed that 
And uh, yeah, remember our uh, preset pack is uh, on sale until Sunday. The, the magic box, thank you to everyone who's already grabbed a copy. And uh, we also have our uh, next feedback live stream this Friday as well. Remember, my G's at 4 p.m. European time if you want to submit a track for the live stream and uh, you're not in Discord, you won't be able to because it's a Discord submission live stream. But you can still come along and watch and uh, thank you all for your support. Links down below as well for one-on-one -on -one lessons. I'm available this winter for those as well. I hope to see you guys on a session soon. And uh, until uh, Friday, my G's, much love, take care, have an amazing day. Peace out.